Hey guys, this is Sol from the Book Biagers. How y'all doing? I am back with a new video for you today. Today is raining, like hasn't stopped. I think it's a here again, passing through Mexico and going to the United States. <laughs> I think it's that. Yesterday stopped, so I thought it passed through already, but I guess not. <laughs> so yeah, I thought, why not film something and talk about some romance books today, right? So today I want to talk about specific romantic tropes. So not best friends to lovers and that's that, or hey to love and finito, you know? These are very specific tropes like Character A and character B meet in very unusual circumstances and then they fall out and years later they meet again but now maybe um, he's a single dad and very specific trope, you know? And I thought you all would like it because they are very hard to find uh, if you google it and you really can only you really can only find them if you read the book and then you recommend it so I thought, hell I've read those books, I might as well recommend them to you all because they are really really good and maybe the tropes that are there are really something you will like so I chose books that I thought have very specific tropes and will give them to you because you all deserve some romance and happily ever afters in your life without further ado, let's get into this video, shall we? I'm gonna talk about today is one of my all-time favorites it became one of my all-time favorites really recently and I thought I wouldn't like this book or not really thought not liking it but I wasn't really interested in reading it everyone was hyping it up and I was like is it really that good and then I saw a video on Twitter I I might as well link it down below because it was amazing and the video shares some quotes of the book with a, I think a Taylor Swift song so I was like damn I need to read this book now so I read it and it's one of my favorite books now you know so the book I'm talking about is You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hoggle and the specific trope, I guess you can really find this trope if you search enough, you will find some books with this trope. I will share my knowledge with you with this specific trope and it's strangers to lovers to enemies to lovers. So <laughs> what happens in You Serve Each Other is these two people, Naomi and Nicholas, are engaged to be married very very soon and Naomi finds out that she isn't really feeling it. She isn't feeling this love anymore. She isn't in love with Nicholas anymore for a while now. But the thing is, if she breaks off the engagement, she has to pay the fees for the wedding and because it has been paid by Nicholas' mother, Naomi will have to pay back all. And she has no money to do that. So she thinks, I shall engage in this prank war and make him break it off. So they do, they create this wild pranks in their new house because obviously they move to make this bond even stronger, but it doesn't work at first. So yeah, they sort of become enemies because they don't really know much about each other, they are lying to each other. They are acting like a good engaged people, like an engaged couple should look like. Like they are happy with themselves, they are the perfect couple, but you know that they don't really are the perfect couple, they don't know a thing about each other. So they engage in this prank war and everything becomes chaos and they find out the real, their real selves and fall in love again. I love that trope. I really really love that trope and I want it everywhere. Like I love lovers to enemies to lovers trope. I think... I think another book has it. Don't quote me on it but I think Rapper's Delight has that trope. I'm not sure, but it's also like a very specific trope, which I adore. 
The next book is Just One More by Jodie Slaughter. The specific trope is this one. I want to pitch it to you. So it's strangers meet on an Uber pool drive on Valentine's Day weekend and then they decide to spend the weekend together on that Uber pool drive. <laughs> so it's a wild trope because if I meet someone on an Uber and a stranger practically really, I wouldn't like I wouldn't go on a date with him. <laughs> I would be scared like right now in Mexico specifically. I I wouldn't go with a stranger to any place <laughs> at all at night at at night and Whitney and Victor meet each other. I guess they do have like a conversation in the Uber pool drive. So they got a feel of what they can expect if they spend more time together. So yeah, they think this person is very interesting, so I want to get to know them a little bit more. They feel attracted to each other, so they spend a night together, and then a night becomes a day together, and so on, until the weekend ends. I guess you, you will have to find out what happens, but I love Whitney and Victor's whole romance. The romance is gold, it's got here, I seriously adore it. Jody Slaughter writes the sexiest scenes. I really, I love the domestic dynamic between them during this weekend. I mean, they don't really know much about each other. They were strangers a day ago. And, but they were so natural getting into this sort of arrangement or relationship dynamic. I adore them going to buy towels to a store. I love it. I love everything about this book. I'm a huge Jodie Slaughter fan if you haven't read her books yet. I highly recommend this one, but also White Whiskey Bargain, my favorite book of 2019. Then we have Deal with the Devil by Kate Rocha, which came out rather really recently, and it's a post-apocalyptic romance novel. It's the start of a new series, so I'm really, really excited because I love Kate Rocha's whole series aesthetic and they always deliver on a good romance. So this specific trope is mercenary librarians team up with super soldiers to save someone <laughs> in this post-apocalyptic world. This book is pitched as Orphan Black meets post-apocalyptic Avengers, which is already really, really cool and interesting and yeah, when I read it, it's practically that, to be honest. I love the concept of mercenary librarians. That's the thing that caught my eye when I first heard about this book. They have this secret library for their community so they can borrow books. But also, this team of women are really, really strong <laughs> and can really kill you in your sleep, to be honest. And they can kill the super soldiers who are a team of guys <laughs> really hot guys i guess <laughs> like not a guess it's true they're really hot and really funny too hot and funny and deadly the perfect combination this team of women meet this team of guys and they team up they are sort of i don't know if enemies but they don't don't trust each other they do not trust each other with reasons they have their secrets and when the super soldiers ask for the mercenary librarians to team up and save this someone, they have other reasons and they lie to them to get this someone. So yeah, I wouldn't trust them either. But Nina, our protagonist, can help but feel attracted towards Knox, who is the leader of the super soldiers group. And they have re this really good banter and they have a lot of sexual tension. Like really, they have a lot of sexual tension. It's wild and it's what you can expect from Kid Rocha. It, it, it was really, really great. I love every single moment I spend reading this book. It's fantastic, action-packed, with lots of plot twists happening around you and the characters are so lovable and interesting you we want to know the history behind every single character and you will want a book for each 
character and you will get it. You will get it. That that's why why I love romance. Like you meet the secondary characters in the first book, I guess, in a series and you you fell in love with the secondary characters and you think this character might just be perfect for the other character and then you pray to the book gods that you'll get a second book in the series with these two characters and then they do and you are happy forever just what you wanted i love romance book gods thank you for giving us companion novels in a series so we can get secondary characters having their own love stories thank you so yeah, that's practically Deal with the Devil. Mercenary librarians team up with super soldiers in this orphan black meets post-apocalyptic Avengers world. If you're into that, you better go read it because it's awesome. So then I have for you A Cowboy to Remember by Rebecca Waterspoon. I absolutely adore this novel and this specific trope. I thought I will not like because I haven't read a lot of books with this trope or really any books because I tend to shy away from this trope which is the amnesia trope I don't I don't read it but I trust Rebecca Witherspoon and every book she publishes I'm into it so I read it and it's fantastic the specific trope in this one is everyone gets amnesia forgets everything in her life even the guy who broke her heart and then when she's at the hospital, she encounters the guy and his brother because they have come to take her back to their home back in California. And she has to learn him again. She might just fall in love with him again, you know? He broke her heart, so he knows what happens back then, but she doesn't. So that's like the big secret. like. When is she going to find out? Is she going to get her memories back? Maybe Amnesia Trope deserves rights, you know? Maybe. I think A Cowboy to Remember is a really nice book. It's really sweet and romantic and I love the start of the series. I also shy away from cowboy romances because romance publishing tends to publish a lot of white cowboy romances. Don't you see the history of cowboys? They publish a lot of white cowboy romances. Also, writing black cowboy romances is Miss Brenda Jackson, so if you also want to read more, you can get to those books. She has like a long backlist, so you have time. You, you, you have a lot to read. Next we have Oops by Alexandra Warren. This specific trope is enemies accidentally get pregnant. And yes, it's as well as you think it is. It's amazing, it's an amazing, fun book. You're gonna have the time of your life reading this book. So, Cambrian, our heroine, doesn't like Maverick, and everything that has to do with him, she rather stay away from it. So what happens next? You might start to wonder, you know, how did they get pregnant <laughs> when they are enemies, you know? Cabri dislikes him, but Maverick doesn't really dislike her. I mean, he feels attracted to her. Also, Cabri feels attracted to him, but she doesn't want to pay attention to that part of herself and tries to ignore the attraction. But every time they meet, they banter, they say stuff towards each other, and everyone is like, you, you're going to get together soon because of how you interact. Cabri is trying to deny that as hard as she can. But then, this one night, have sex. They, they have sex. <laughs> That's it. And he doesn't wear a condom. So, next thing you know, Cameron is pregnant with the guy she dislikes. <laughs> it's a fun ride, to be honest. Everything about this book, I love the development of this relationship, but because they don't really know each other, they don't know how the other interacts outside of what they know, what they perceive, right? Because Maverick is like a social media star. He gets invited to parties to post on social media, on his Instagram and stuff like that. Cambry knows that first and sees it and thinks that's Maverick. He loves parties and he loves drinking. 
and he loves flirting with everyone but when she gets to know Maverick they start to fall in love she sees that he's gonna be a great dad and I love I love that <laughs> I do love the accidentally pregnant trope I know many hate it I know I know <laughs> but I do love it I love when a baby is involved in a relationship like the hero becomes so so soft and he will give his life for this baby <laughs> and I really love this this book I think everyone should read it if you enroll if you enjoy romance the second book it just came out is a spin-off novel from this first book it, it's called whoa I love the second book more than oops but both of them are really worth your time and last but not least one of my comfort reads the book i constantly reread if i feel i'm in a book slump i always go to that one because it gives me all the serotonin i need <laughs> and it always delivers with the good feels and the suny moments and that book is prom queen perfect by Clarice David. It's, I think it's a YA novel, but I'm adding it because I love the trope in this. And the specific trope is childhood friends to enemies slash rivals to lovers. <laughs> I love, love that trope. You, you can also get that trope from one of my other favorite YA novels, The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You by Lily Anderson. They also have childhood friends who end up being rivals who then become lovers. So if you're into that specific trope, these are two books you can read. I'm going to mainly talk about Prom Queen Perfect by Clarice David. We have Alex de la Cruz, who is the queen of her high school. She is popular, she is rich, she has the coolest clothes, she is the prettiest. She meets this girl who is in need of a makeover and maybe some sort of matchmaking in, in the process. Prom Queen Perfect is inspired by Emma by Jane Austen, which I adore that book. I love Emma as a character. She, she isn't really a favorite of many, but I love how unlikable she is and the decisions she makes and how she grows from those. So I love, that's why I love Prom Queen Perfect. And Clarice David, the author, pitches us, Gossip Girl meets Jane Austen, so all, all the things we want. Alex meets this girl and wants to completely change her, but there's Adam, her childhood friend who she hates, like Knightley, and he, like Knightley, is not into the whole makeover. He tells her she shouldn't do it because she is doing it for herself and not for the girl. And yeah, so stuff happens and you might not like some decisions Alex makes, but she learns from that and I love to see the process and the whole story develop in front of my eyes and see that Alex really learns from herself. So she's sort of a Blair Waldorf type of character where she has good intentions but she does it in a grown way, but she learns from that. I love this relationship as well. The trope is amazing. I mean, their parents are best friends. Their families meet pretty often. I think their siblings are married. I think like her sister and his brother are married like in Emma. So that's a little bit of inspiration too. So they meet each other pretty often, but when they go to these parties or dinners their families arrange, they don't talk, they hate each other, they don't connect at all. But the truth is they really have really good chemistry between each other and you are just waiting for them to kiss and fall in love, really. So that's the end of this video. These are six books you can read with very specific tropes. I hope you like this video and give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down, comment below, give me your very specific tropes you love and wish you can find in books. Maybe I can do a part two of this video and find you books you put in the comments with the tropes you put in the comments, I mean. 
so yeah I if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet click that subscribe button I, I am giving you everything romance related so if you're into romance and books I am the girl for you I'll see you in the next video bye I love you thank you for everything for all the support I am almost to 400 followers that's wild that's I never saw it coming, so thank you.